Um, as promised at the beginning of the bulletin, we have a guest in studio, and that's the ODM presidential candidate, Raila Odinga. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Uh, thank you, Vivian. Before I go into the manifesto that you launched today, there's questions that are biting Kenyans, and they really want to hear what your comment is. First of all, did you sign an MOU with the Muslim community? Yes, I did. And why is it such a secret and the contents haven't come out? It is not a secret. It cannot be a secret. Because um, it was something that was done in very good faith. And I would say that we are going to release it in our good time. And we are going to shame the speculators. Well, of course, you have played with the minds of Kenyans in that you've delayed it and waited for it. MOUs are signed in business and elsewhere in the presence of everyone, even when it's happening. Yeah, that's the reason why I could have talked about it myself. With you in my launch, I because I didn't think that there's anything very serious or, uh, or negative about it. So no Sharia law for the whole of Kenya. You know that, I mean, I am a Baptist Anglican, so it is preposterous for somebody to suggest that I would sign a document saying that Islam is going to be the sole religion in this country, and uh, to say nothing about the Sharia law for that matter. So this is basically very cheap propaganda. And I invite my opponents to read, look at the Bible again. I love my neighbors. But more importantly, the two commandments say, Thou shall not lie, and thou shall not steal. Very important. It's great to hear that. Dick Morris, why did you bring Dick Morris into the country to help you out as a strategist? Dick Morris is uh, very well known uh, as a campaign strategist. He did help Bill Clinton twice in his campaign. I think we're aware of that, but is why this, important? Of course, I'm just he's helped several countries, just right now in Spain. So, I mean, we benefit from experiences in other countries. My own opponents, who are making too much noise about Dick Morris, have a, a, a consultant here by the name of Marcus courage of Africa practice. What is he doing here? Well, we'll investigate that further and find out since you're releasing it at this moment. Yeah. But it does seem to send the perception that you do not trust the local talent that you have and expertise. Not at all. We always complement our local ta talents with others. Where else do we have, for example, in all our public universities, external examiners who come to look at uh, what, what they do here, to ensure that there's some kind of parity. As I said yesterday when I was presenting my papers to the Electoral Commission, we want to bring this, uh, the electoral practice in this country to international standards. And that's the reason here why you will see that whatever we're doing does measure, in fact, to practices elsewhere in the world. You launched your manifesto today? Yes. Uh, what's the heart of your manifesto, if you could encapsulate what you are committing yourself, as you, since you use the word commitment pr uh, plenty, to Kenyans? We are basic, basing our vision on the Kenyan dream, a free, democratic and prosperous nation. Prostrate, prostrate means that the country is developed, there's wealth, and secondly, that there's equity in distribution. So these elections are about the haves and have-nots. That is, that those who really want to cater for the few and us who want to cater for the majority of our people. So we are dealing, poverty is very important. In, in a, we are at the core of our uh, manifesto. Poverty is at the core of your manifesto. Poverty is at the core of ODM Kenya's manifesto. I'm sure that at some point also PNU believe that poverty is key and they've been working on that through the past years. You talk about a dream and you have very many commitments and many promises you've made. Are they attainable? Sure they are attainable. and We will not make empty promises that we have no intention of fulfilling unlike our opponent. Could I bring one to the table? Yes. Constitution is six months. How are you going to attain that? You need to know that Kenyans have been at the process of making constitution for over five years. 
the Kenyan constitution making has now been recognized worldwide as the most consultative. Excuse me. The most consultative. In other words, we have uh, gone through a very elaborate structure right up to the grassroots to collect the views of Kenyans, which were then compiled into a draft document, published and views invited, Kenyans commented. A second draft was prepared, which was then submitted to a constitutional conference. We deliberated over months on end, and eventually it was passed. And then we went to a referendum, of course with a different doctor document. But what Kenya want is already there. But it only needs to be polished, maybe by uh, experts, and then taken to a referendum. So that we do believe that with political goodwill, it is possible to give Kenyans a new constitution within six months. Of course, if in that case you do become president, you, you're coming into a system and into a law. And there are things that have to work according to that. That's why we ask, if six months, are you going to get parliamentary approval? You don't know whether you're going to have strength in parliament. Then how can you give us such a promise? We have to make certain assumptions in, in politics. One, that we are going to have the numbers. Two, that we are going to have Kenyans who want change. And we think that the Kenyan public are going to give us members of parliament who want to bring about change in this country. Therefore, on the basis of that assumption, we think that it is possible to give the people of this country a new constitution within six months. Had President Mike Ibaki wanted to have a new constitution within the hundred days that he had promised, it was attainable. It was he himself who became an impediment and therefore blocked it. I'll continue on that line. You say that President Kibaki has uh, not performed well, he has failed in his performance, but the truth is we do have uh, growth economically. The truth is that we do have more children going to school. Uh, there are other truths with regard to businesses uh, thriving a little better. Our roads are better paved as it is. There's electricity that we see along our roads also. Is, can you quite just dismiss all the work that has been attained? I am not dismissing all the work that has been attained because I am also part of the achievement that will be made, as you know that I was in the government for three years, most of us in, in the LDP, and therefore we contributed in no small measure to what is now being claimed by President Kibaki. But this cannot be claimed by PNU, because PNU was not a government. PNU was formed just the other day. So those achievements were made by the NAC government, and the chairman of NAC is Honorable Charity Kalukingilu who is now in the ODM. But I want to, uh, that aside, there have been achievements, yes. But the question that you want to, the Kenyans want to ask, again. are Kenyans happy? Because the economy is not just about figures, that the economy is now going at the rate of six point something percent. If it excludes a large percentage of the people, that's why I'm saying that we are trying to deal with the issues of poverty. What has been achieved has not benefited by and large the majority of this, the, 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 the people of this country. So we need to introduce another uh, indicator to measure uh, growth. And that is the gross national happiness. Are the people which, happy? Which doesn't have an instrument for measurement either. Um, and it, it does have. It, these commitments that you've made, five years, you're going to attain them all in five years? There are some which you are going to attain in five years. There are some which are long term. So you're making another assumption that there will be not one term but two terms? Quite uh, certainly, yes. Because we do believe that if right. we get a chance to run the government, Kenyans will have confidence. But I, what I'm trying to say is that they are short term, medium term, and long-term uh, aims in our manifesto. Finally, uh, there's been the issue of whether you can be trusted or not, whether you can stick it with regard to the fact that you have been in opposition and you have moved parties often. Uh, 
are you able, first of all, is Raila Odinga a trustworthy man, as has been questioned, and second, can you stick it? Of course, uh, I am a very consistent person, and that's the reason, in fact, why many Kenyans have confidence in me. I have changed political parties just for information twice only, and with reasons. When I changed the political party the first time, I, the, we went, I, went, I resigned my parliamentary position and I went for a by-election. And I was re-elected because I explained to the people the reason why I resigned from that political party. The second time around, we disagreed again with President Moy. And again, I resigned and formed National Rainbow Coalition. And we were, Kenyans again showed confidence because we won election again the second time. I have not changed elections, I mean, parties more than twice. Are you trustworthy? You had an agreement with Kalonzo and you went back on it, according to him. I do not really want to answer what I consider to be trash because if there's an agreement, it should prove it. I have never, and uh, I'm a Christian, I want to say that I've never ever promised Mr. Kalonzo Musioka that I was going to back him for the presidency. That exists in his own imagination. If you are called upon to bring unity by working together with uh, a strong opposition, would you consider that? Very briefly. We're talking unity, and unity is one of your key elements and commitments. Would you be able to bring unity into this country after this election if you have to work with someone like Honorable Kalonzo? Of course, we want unity of purpose. And when we unite with somebody with whom we have a common agenda. But I want you to understand that there's also need in this country for a strong opposition. And like what President Kibaki tried to do, because he does not believe in multipartism, to try to kill opposition party. We would like to see that there is a strong opposition that will check us when we are in government. Very good. Thank you very much, Raila Odinga, and congratulations on uh, successful nomination handing in yesterday and the manifesto. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank, at you. Thank you.